What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna share with you a behind the scenes look at an exclusive Q&A fireside chat I did at Detroit New Tech Meetup. I'll be answering the question that you see right here on this screen and some of the most insightful things that I've learned along the journey of building my Swim Pro. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ferris Sabati. I'm the co-founder and CEO of my Swim Pro. And in the last five years or so, we've built my Swim Pro to be a global technology and media company with a distributed team that spans over 10 different time zones. The application has now been downloaded over 1 million times and the company's doing seven figures in revenue. We've done all of this on less than $1 million in outside capital raise through venture, angel, and equity crowdfunding. In this series, I share what I've learned in the journey of building my Swim Pro, helping entrepreneurs take their business to the next level. If you have an idea for starting a company, but you're not really sure what to do next, you've come to the right place because I help entrepreneurs develop the right mindset and share the right tips and tricks that you need to take those first steps. If any of that sounds interesting, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like this video, and I hope you enjoy this special edition of the Q&A. Who, who helped you build that? Were you tech, did you have tech backgrounds or did you find some sort of interesting tool that allowed you to build this app easily? Like, how, how did that MVP and building that MVP uh, keep going? Yeah, I often get asked, you know, how did you make the first version of my Swim Pro? Are you an engineer? Are you a developer? Like, how do you make this happen? So, no, I'm not an engineer by trade. I mean, I studied business, and I think a lot of that resonates with a lot of people who have an idea to start an app and they don't really know what to do next because, you know, they do they hire an engineer? Do they do they create mockups and go to a firm? Do they learn how to program themselves? And actually all of those are possibilities. You could, you could learn how to program yourself and build the application fully by yourself. You could hire a firm, you could hire an engineer online. And I don't think there's a right and wrong way to do it. There's definitely a better way to do it if you're trying to build a technology company. So if you were to outsource development and hire someone or go to a firm, that'll only work for so long. So you might use that as step one to get your initial MVP. You know, you have an idea, you draw out some mockups, and then you go to a firm and you hire them or an individual and they make your first version. And if you're trying to build a technology company, you ultimately have to have that technology in house at some point. So that might be your starting point to prove some kind of a milestones and build traction. And then eventually you bring it in house. I decided not to do that. And I didn't want to do that for a number of reasons because I had worked at other technology companies and I've seen it done both ways. I've seen it done where you own the technology. I've seen it where you outsource to another company. I had seen the pros and cons. And for me, even though I'm not an engineer by trade, I had learned a lot online through different platforms. Uh, Team Treehouse, I learned how to do basic, you know, programming. I started out with front end, you know, HTML and CSS, making some websites, get an understanding of how that works. I moved over to learning Swift. I made two iPhone apps. They didn't publish to the app store and they were super basic. They couldn't do anything. But more importantly, <clears throat> I learned about Xcode and how you communicate and how object-oriented programming is supposed to work. So I knew all along I wasn't really going to try and like build the technology all by myself, but I wanted to really understand what's going on, even if it's at a high level, so I can communicate and understand and know what the heck I'm talking about. If I'm trying to hire someone or I'm trying to make stuff happen, it definitely helps to have some kind of a baseline knowledge rather than just making stuff up or Google searching everything. Believe me, I Google search a lot. I don't know most of the stuff that, that we're doing, but if you Google it and you understand basic level, that's enough to get you started. So understanding this high level software architecture, what I wanted to do first, I created some mockups. I go to Detroit Startup Weekend and I present the idea. I recruit a team of two other individuals. And so we had the three of us are working on an idea called My Swim Pal at the time. And in three days we created the Android app. And that was very basic MVP. Both of the other gentlemen were engineers by trade. So we, we put together this MVP, the first version of my Swim Pro. It was called My Swim Pal in just three days. And it really shouldn't take that long to build the first version of an app because you should have a relatively good idea of the assumption that you're trying to test, what you're trying to validate. And by creating that first version, that's all you need to do is just to test if you had that assumption is correct, the hypothesis that you had. So the first version of my Swim Pro was very basic. It was three skill levels, it could have been one. And we had eight workouts per skill level. So I wrote 24 workouts. The onboarding of the app was, what skill level are you? Beginner, intermediate, advanced. And then upon selecting one of those three, 
you're presented with a library of eight different workouts and the fancy version of our MVP, you could export that to PDF and you could print the workout out. That was the whole app. It didn't even need to be an app. It could have been just, you know, you can do fancy things online now with a web view and you can validate the same thing if people would want a workout by skill level. And from there, the application has evolved significantly. But from the very beginning, I wanted to build that technology team in-house. So one of those team members from Detroit Startup Weekend is now a member of the team full-time, one of my co-founders, Mike. And then we use that momentum to recruit the next team member, Adam, my other co-founder, our CTO now, and we built the iOS version of the app. And after a few months, we had a more polished version of my Swim Pro. And then a year later, we started monetizing it through an in-app subscription. And then two or three years after that, we passed a million downloads, seven figures in revenue. But the early days were all about how can we put together the MVP? How can we validate the assumptions we have? How can we show the world that there's some kind of value here? And would these be people be willing to use it, to download it, to continue to use it more than once and eventually to pay for it? So it, it sounds like a lot kind of condensed in a short period of time, but if you unpackage it, it really is step by step. Like, what are we trying to solve? How do we solve it? What is What does it look like? What is the UI? And then how do we put that together in step one? And it should only take a few hours. Phase one MVP should really only take a few hours. Even if you hire someone or a firm, you should strip it down to the bare minimum. And that's how I recommend for people to go about trying to build an app. I hope you guys enjoyed that special edition Q&A segment from that Detroit New Tech meetup. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot to me if you hit that like button. Check out the other videos I've done on entrepreneurship, angel investing, and how to start a business 101. If you guys enjoy it, let me know what you think in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. As always, keep hustling.